Hey guys, so it's me, Dr. B. How are you? Um, some of you have um, seen me before. You know this is me. For the rest of you, hi, I'm Dr. B. Uh, I decided uh, it would be weird. It would be just so weird if we got any further into the semester and you didn't really know who I am. Like, I'm a real human person, a real, a real person being. And so here I am, my person being. My person being is in the middle of a pandemic, um, just like the rest of you guys. And I'm tired and I'm overworked. And um, in general, kind of just, you know, water, nose, holding it, holding my nose just above the water. So if you feel like you're holding things just barely together, or if you're even falling apart, I just want to tell you that I'm with you, okay? Um, I've already, you know, uh, you know, granted some extensions and I'm trying to remind you all when things are due and when, when things don't come in, um, to let you know, Hey, I really want to see this. Um, just go ahead and let me know, you know, how much of an extension that you need. Um, please always feel free. It's right there in the syllabus. Like I said, your well being is far more important to me than the content of this course. So I want us all to make it through this. Uh, I'm here to help with whatever I can do. Let me know. Okay, that being said, part of what I think I can help with is just to kind of close up our close up shop on our Odyssey unit. And so I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, just have to remind you guys that we do have student learning outcomes for the class. And there's a number of different ways that you guys are showing that you are hitting them. One of those is Twitter. One of those is the discussion boards. And you guys are killing them both. Killing it. Okay. And I'm not even talking about like by pandemic standards. Where we're all just sort of like coasting. You guys are crushing. Compared to all my classes. This is, I have taught this class for, oh, I let Dr. Dr. Lanigan teach it last year. But I've taught it for six years. So, um, you guys. You guys. I'm super impressed. I just wanted to let you know. Uh, but there are other ways that you will be showing your knowledge, right? That you've met the learning outcomes of the course. And one of those coming up as an exam. Now it is a take home exam and you have an entire week to do it, but it does involve stuff that you need to pick up from the first three units, reading across time, reading across languages and reading across cultures. Okay. So I don't want to close up shop on reading across time without really hitting the major notes. You guys are in it to win it. The discussion boards are amazing and you really know what you're doing. You've answered all my questions um, in great ways. And even sometimes when one of you missteps, somebody else comes in and corrects it. You're all doing great. But I just, it's really important to me because I know you all really wanna know like what's critical for me to take out of this unit, okay? So that's what I'm gonna talk about now. If I end up going too long, I am going to go ahead and um, stop and then start another video for you because we all know we're watching videos, you know, like um, in between other stuff. Take a break from one thing, watch a video, and nobody can stand to sit and watch a 20-minute video even. So uh, I may cut this into two. But, um, oh, you guys like my globe? Teach world literature. Have a fancy globe made out of a, it's actually, it's made out of stones around the world it's kind of dorky but it's who i be you guys anyways okay so what is super critical to take out of this unit i'm gonna be honest with you the kind of questions that i'm asking for the discussion posts are um they're very carefully curated to get you to think about the texts right but not necessarily so that you have a great and long-lasting memory of all of the details of the odyssey to me, that isn't what's really important here. What's really important here is that you're learning how to read. Because this, the, you know, the course is about you uh, getting the tools to put in your tool belt. So that when you continue to read literature, spe specifically literature from other cultures and other times in the future, you have all these tools, interpretive tools that you can pull out and help them to understand, right, the text. Um, and so the first tool is this notion of like, okay, how do I read something that is very distant in time from me, right? <clears throat> so this whole idea of this class is, you know, the question is, what is world literature and how do we read world literature? Like, 
name of the textbook, how to read for literature, right? So I'm, I'm really focusing on, you know, asking you questions that help you figure out how to read texts, not necessarily how to understand this exact text. Of course, you will understand these exact texts better by uh, answering those questions. But they're also, like I said, for the purpose of, you know, how do I understand what it means to read a, you know, a text that is distant, different, foreign to us, right? So from the Odyssey, the, from this unit, the kind of things that you all picked up are things like, if I say, you know, well, how do I read a text? Each text shows us actually how to read it, right? Um, each text, like when we're talking about fictional texts, of course, right? Re literature, right? Um, not all literature is fictional, but even, even nonfiction, right, is constructed, right? So a world is constructed in literature, right? And that world is the, the, the rules, the ethical system inside that world are how we need to judge what is happening in that world, right? It's, and, and you absolutely picked up on this with the Odyssey. It is very easy to apply, impose really is the word that we often use, impose a system of rules and ethics and morals, so on and so forth onto a text, especially when it's distant from us in time. Um, we, we naturally want as readers, as an audience to impose our own systems of beliefs and, and, um, um, epistemologies, the ways that we, um, come to understand the world, come to know the world. We want to apply that, but what we really need to do is let every text tell us, okay, what is the world system? What is the worldview that is established within this text? And that is how I will judge things. Uh, it's easier to kind of understand that if we think about the distance of contemporary speculative fiction, let's say like science fiction or fantasy, right? These are worlds which are not ours, right? Um, and we sort of absorb the rules of the magical rules of Harry Potter, right? Uh, and um, the mythology that is created within, right? Game of Thrones, right? And so forth. And we judge characters' actions. Um, and the statements, uh, uh, you know, that are made and so on and so forth on the world that's created. And so we kind of have to think about let every text, not just those very, very easily understandable as fiction, um, um, because they're speculative, they're science fiction, they're fantasy, they're magical realism, so on and so forth. We let them play by their own rules. We need to let all texts play by their own rules. And the it's the narrative devices which in it, within a text that are gonna give you those cues for how to understand, how to, how to, how to even notice in the first place what the rules are being set out uh, and then how to evaluate from them. So narrative devices, you ran into a lot of narrative devices and then in the Odyssey, I was asking you questions about like, what does that prepositio thing in the beginning do? Or, and all, like, almost nobody decided to answer this question. What is that weird interruption right, when um, Odysseus is in the underworld? And so um, those are, you know, there are almost an unnameable amount of different identifiable narrative devices. Narrative theory is actually my specialty as a scholar. And so I can list you a whole crazy amount of different narrative elements that all work together, right? To, to create a narrative. Um, and the way that we think about a narrative theory is that there's a story and then there's the package that the story comes in. And that's where adaptations come in. How you all can see that you can tell one story. The Zimmerman play is really the best example. You can tell the same story in a very different package and you have a different outcome, right? So they're different narratives. So the Odyssey, as translated by Wilson is not the same narrative as the Odyssey as uh, translated <laughs> or adapted into is the really the better term is adapted into a play by Zimmerman. So um, those narrative devices ask you to pay attention to how the story is told, not just what the story is, not what it says, but how the story is told. And the Odyssey is a beautiful example with that, of that. And that's why I love to start there is the narrative devices are so obvious. 
because, as you read from Damrosh, it comes out of the oral storytelling tradition, where it is full of oral cues, the kind of repetition, the kind you know, epithets, so on and so forth, that help establish an ongoing world and a recognizable plot and a recognizable set of people for an audience that are listening to it as opposed to reading it. We have a lot more attention spans, right, when we're reading because we can go back and reread. But so things that you should be thinking about in the future about text are, you know, not just what's the story, but how is the story being told? Who is telling it? Who is your narrator? Um, are there multiple narrators? There's actually, you know, the narrator proper of the Odyssey is a third person, omniscient narrator who focalizes, right? Who focuses the narration on Odysseus, right? We don't really go to, you know, um, he focuses on Odysseus. We do go to other places at the same time. But when we're going there, we're going there to meet Odysseus's son, Odysseus's wife, so on and so forth, right? It's not, we're going over to see Achilles. <laughs> Didn't end very well for him, <laughs> but <laughs> we're not going to visit any of the other, you know, um, heroes of the Trojan War. We're focused on the life of one man, of, of Odysseus. Um, and um, we're most closely focalized on him when he's actually present in a scene. Uh, but also, you have a narrator within the narration. You have Odysseus, who, is re who in, through reported speech, um, functions as your first-person narrator. And you have to think, does the story change? Do I trust this story? Is Odysseus a reliable narrator? What are the cues within right, the text itself? They tell you whether or not you should believe this story that Odysseus is telling you, right? And that interruption is there as a reminder to say, hey, hey, remember, Odysseus is your narrator. Odysseus is the one telling you this story. And you might want to think a little bit about how you've received this story differently. Because Odysseus, our cunning trickster character, is the one who's telling it to you right now. So... That's just a, it's a, it's a narrative to, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, I think this means I should probably take a break and come back for another video in a second. So <clears throat> I'm gonna cough this one out, take a beverage break, and I will be back with some more about what should we learn from the Odyssey?